How's it going guys? Ryan Dieger here and today we're going to look at how the Machine Mark II mapping works with uh, Tractor. So first I'll show you how to set up uh, how to set up the mappings here. So you're going to have three things that are included with this mapping. You've got a controller editor mapping, the effect settings, and the machine mapping itself. So the first thing you want to do is load, uh, load the mapping into the controller editor. So once you've got your controller editor open, you go to templates under the Machine Mark II uh, controller and then go to edit hit open and you just want to find that uh, folder that you or find those uh, maps that you just downloaded so you'll just double click on that and then once you double click on that it's going to open in your template and you just want to make sure that that is selected um, it'll if you look in the template here too I've kind of labeled everything so that it's easy to see what everything does um, but just for uh, for this video, we're going to go into a bit more detail about how everything works. Um, so once you've done that, now we can import the mappings, the TSIs into Tractor. So there's two things to import. Uh, we'll do the effect settings first. To import the effect settings, you just need to go to this import button down here. And again, just locate the TSI. We want to load the effect settings one. So if we hit open, it's going to open a little menu here and we just want to import our effect settings. You just click OK. Um, if you, this is going to change your effect settings from what they're at now. So if you want to, you know, if you don't like what it does and you want to go back to what you had before, you want to make a backup by clicking export and then exporting your, uh, making sure that your effect settings are checked here. So if you uncheck everything else, this will, uh, give you a backup of your current effect settings. Next, we can import our, uh, machine, machine mapping, open on the machine mapping. And then once it's loaded, you just want to assign it to Machine Mark II Virtual for import and uh, outport. And once you've done that, you should be ready to go. All the effects should work. So now I'll, uh, I'll focus on how the mapping works and we'll specifically focus on the pressure effects first and the uh, remix, the velocity remix pad since that's likely what you downloaded this for. There's up to eight uh, layers of control with the different groups here. So we're gonna focus on groups G and H, which is where our uh, pressure effects are loaded. Uh, so group G responds to deck A and then group H applies to uh, deck B. So on the bottom here, we've got cues five, six, seven, and eight. Uh, you can delete those by holding the mute button and uh, hitting the pads. And then if you wanna assign them again, you can just click on it and they'll light up if they're, if they're assigned. Um, the green buttons here are uh, loop flux. So as soon as you hit them, it triggers a loop and it triggers flux mode. Uh, so you can do build-ups. So if I play the track, it goes from one, half, quarter, to eight. And as you can see, it, it jumps to where the where the track would have been. The top eight pads here are our uh, pressure effects pads. So I've got a beat master loaded on here, and then a gator loaded on here. And again, the harder you press, the more uh, intense the effect's gonna be. And we've got reverb, uh, flanger, and then delay, phaser, and filter 92 LFO, and then a transpose stretch. These two, the dry wet, automatically goes to full along with uh, this pad here. For the other ones, it just sets it to half. And then on one of the uh, knob pages here, I've got a dry wet for effects bank one and effects bank two. So if you're in deck B, you wanna play with this far right knob here. So you can crank the dry wet to make the effects uh, even more intense. So the same applies to uh, group H or group G. This just is everything's just mapped to a deck A on this group. So all the exact same effects, everything's just on a deck A. The next thing you probably want to look at is the pressure velocity pads. They're mapped to group C, controls the remix cells across 16 pads, and group D or the remix cells for uh, deck D. So on here, uh, we've got a remix deck loaded, and right now everything's playing at full volume across the. 16 pads. If we want to trigger, uh, if we want to put it into velocity mode, you hit this note repeat button and that'll light up when it's in velocity mode. And now as you can see, the volume fader for the track is, uh, is jumping here and responding to the pressure. So, and these will light up depending on which, uh, pad you, or which remix cell you triggered last. Uh, so the same applies to deck D. This puts everything into this modifier puts everything into uh, velocity mode. 
If you just want the remix cells to trigger at full volume, just hit note repeat, and that brings all the remix slot volumes to full. And now it plays at at full volume, no matter no matter how hard or soft you hit it. A couple other things: this record button here is set to a modifier, and these eight buttons here are set to the remix cell pages or remix deck pages. So the top four are for deck C. Uh, the bottom four for deck D. So if I hit hit one of these buttons with the modifier, it'll change the page. And as you can see, these will also indicate what page we're on. So this is page two. And then as you can see, when I hold the modifier here, these buttons change. So what this does is it's similar to the F1. So the top, so the uh, top buttons here will trigger key lock for uh, for the four slots. Um, these will trigger the effects for the four slots. Um, this will trigger the monitor for the four slots, so you can queue up each individual slot if you want. And then the bottom four, I've never really used punch mode that much, so I left it out. What I mapped it to was uh, was stops, stop buttons for each slot. We'll keep going across the group pages here. Next thing we've got on group F, again, we've got queues across the bottom here, five to eight on the bottom. And this group F and group E, group F responds to uh, deck B, Group E is for deck uh, A. This is just for my own creative purposes. Um, I've mapped key the key, no key knob to these eight pads here. So if I've got a track playing, I can change the pitch from minus four to plus four. And then these are also mapped to, uh, to a cue. Whatever uh, cue you recently used, it's gonna trigger that cue. So to be honest, I'm still trying to find like the best way to incorporate that. Um, again, this is just a full kind of walkthrough of this mapping, so I want to explain how everything kind of works. Um, these top buttons here, the plan is to map them to the uh, remix decks so that you can play like drum sound, drum samples in there. Again, Group E, the same, same applies. So Q's five to eight, and then uh, key knob control. Uh, to reset that, I, I've assigned that to enter. And if you hit enter, it resets the key for uh, for both decks. Next thing we'll look at is uh, group B. It's divided into two here. So the left half of the pads controls the uh, loops, controls loops. So 16, 8, 4, 2, 1, half, quarter, 8. Hitting them, hitting them will uh, exit the loop. Uh, so this is for deck A on this side. And then deck B is on the right, right half of the pads. Group A. Uh, it's eight, eight full cues on the bottom, uh, bottom eight pads for deck A, eight full cues on the top for deck B, and again, they respond, they, they light up if there's cues there. Again, if you want to delete those, you hold the mute button and just, uh, hit, hit the pads and you can assign them by clicking on them. Next thing we'll probably want to look at here is the, uh, transport section and what that all controls. So, as I said, the record button is a modifier. Play here plays uh, deck A, and then restart triggers the master and sync here. And then on the right, we've got play for deck B, master for deck B, and sync for deck B. And if we hold the modifier, we can also control deck C and D. So these light up because they're currently playing right now. So if I hit play on both of those, that'll trigger uh, deck C and D. And again, master and sync for deck C. Master and sync for deck B if you're holding the modifier here. These two arrows will load tracks into deck A or deck B. Next thing that we've got is uh, the different pad pages. So on this uh, transition tools uh, knob page, I've got uh, seek, seek control for the track so you can scroll through the entire track. Um, this is really good for, you know, if you want to find cue points or just get to a certain point in the track really quickly. And the nice thing is, is that the bars here will actually respond to the position of the track. So as the track plays, this bar is going to move until it reaches, uh, the very end. The next thing I've mapped is a uh, tempo adjust. So if you've got a track, adjust the, uh, fader position here or adjust the tempo scrolling up and down. And it's, uh, this has soft takeover enabled, so you won't get a dramatic jump in tempo. Um, basically the knob has to reach the point where the pitch fader is in the track or on in the software before it'll start moving that. 
Uh, next thing I'm mapped here is uh, the loop size. And again, this is um, so this is mapped to soft takeover as well, so you don't get any drastic jumps in uh, in value. You still have to rely on the bar does respond to the the loop size position. You'll still have to rely on the software to know exactly where you are. Dry wet for uh, effects bank one and dry wet for effects bank two uh, on the far far right knobs here. Um, the second half of the knobs just is the exact same as the first four just applies to uh, deck B so, so that covers the knobs now on top we've got uh, I've got key these two buttons here are mapped to the key knob so it'll increase it or it'll decrease it by one and increase it by one up top here and again if it's got a slash that slash in the label that means it's mapped to the modifier so I've got key lock uh, on mapped to the modifier so if I hold my modifier down here hit that it's gonna turn key lock on and off um, if I want to reset, so let's say I've got my key knob at a really low value, like minus six, I can hold this, hit this right button, and it'll reset the knob, the key knob back to zero. Uh, top button here is mapped to loop set, so that's dependent on where the loop value is, or loop size uh, value is. I've got what's supposed to be an echo freeze mapped to uh, this top right knob here, but I still need to map that. I'll, uh, I'll update that in a new mapping. So pressing the left and right arrow buttons here will change the uh, change the knob pages. I've got some default default mappings loaded. I've got a delay, a reverb, and a turntable effects mapped to effects bank three. These loaded into single mode. Um, same goes for uh, effects bank four. So think of it as kind of deck A, deck B. Um, and then I've got a freeze button here. So this is mapped to button two in single mode. So I could have a delay going, and then these bottom knobs here are effect to uh, the effects knobs in effects bank three. So I can turn up the dry, dry wet, or knob one, knob two, knob three, and I can hit freeze. If I hit the delay button again, that'll reset it. I get a reverb, and again I can turn up the intensity of the reverb with the dry wet freeze it and get like a nice a nice reverb tail and again if I hit reverb it just resets the track um, and again these are all mapped to soft page over too so you won't get uh, too, like a big jump uh, by touching the knob they won't activate until they reach the point where the knobs are in the software uh, next is a turntable effect knob so this gives you a big big turntable wind down and this one, this one takes a while to engage for some reason. I think it, it has to do with the effect. But when you hit it, you get a big turntable wind down. And then when you turn it off, it just instantly snaps the track back to normal. So this is really useful for, uh, again, if you're like switching to a new genre or a new tempo, you can just like you can just hit that and then instantly drop in your uh, new genre or new tempo track. So it's the same for these pads here. This just applies to uh, Effects Bank 4 for uh, Deck B. Next page is uh, Remix Deck Control. So we've got uh, Mutes for uh, Remix Deck C on the left here and Volume Control for um, Remix Deck C. And again, the nice thing is, is that these uh, bars will respond to the value or respond to the position in the software. So if I were to hit our uh, note repeat button here, which uh, triggers velocity sensitive mode, that's going to snap uh, the volume back to 100%. So you could you'll see that indicated on the on the bars here, and it's the same for the right page here. So next page that we've got, there's nothing mapped to the knobs here right now. I'm still trying to figure out what would be the most effective use of that. Um, but we've got remix, more remix deck control up here. So if I go back here, we can load in, we can load in tracks into the remix cells just by hitting, hitting a pad. You can delete tracks and cells by holding this delete modifier and clicking, clicking a cell. And we can also reverse, reverse tracks. So that'll work for that. Uh, we can also capture loops from tracks. And hit that.
and now it's playing uh, that four beat loops captured in a uh, deck C. So the same applies on the right here for uh, deck uh, remix deck D. For now, that's kind of the full walkthrough of the of this machine mapping. I will update it. I've already noticed that there's some errors in the mapping, so I will be updating the mapping in the future here, and I'll have a full write-up loaded up pretty soon too. So for now, I hope you really enjoy the mapping. If you have any suggestions, feel free to leave comments uh, below. Thank you.